The drill instructor stood in front of his platoon for the last time on a warm September day in San Diego. Platoon dismissed, he commanded. The 50 recruits took one step back and responded, Sir, platoon disbanded, I, sir, rolling over onto their backs and letting out a collective cry of URA. The formation split up and headed away from the parade ground. One last time, most gathered around the drill instructor, shook his hand, and went off to find relatives or a bus to the airport. I was no different from the rest. After shaking hands with the staff sergeant, I grabbed my sea bag and headed for the bus to the airport. My name is George Michaels, but on that day in 1974, I was Lance Corporal George Michaels of the United States Marine Corps, and all I wanted to do was get back to Texas and my fiancé, Marcia Esposito. It was a long and grueling six months, but I had finally completed recruit training, earned the right to wear the eagle, globe, and anchor, and was looking forward to the next chapter of my life, which included marrying the girl of my dreams. You're probably wondering why it took six months, since boot camp usually lasts about 12 weeks. It's simple, the day we finished the first phase, my appendix ruptured and I went into surgery, which required several weeks of recovery. Normally, according to the doctors, I would have been able to be back on my feet in a few weeks, but I ended up getting an infection that required antibiotics and extra care. Naturally, training for my original platoon continued, and I was held back until the doctors declared me fit for duty. By the time I had recovered enough to continue training without further harming myself, Almost three additional months had been added to my stay at MCRD San Diego. Yes, I am a Hollywood Marine. I was finally assigned to a new platoon and completed the grueling training course, earning the rank of top recruit. In addition to getting a set of dress uniforms, which in those days Marines usually had to buy out of their own pockets. I was also promoted to Lance Corporal and was honored to carry the platoon. Marcia and I wrote to each other as often as we could, and she often sent me pictures. Although, a month or two ago, the pictures stopped coming. However, some of the pictures did come in on what was called a hogboard. This was a corkboard set up in a compartment where recruits could post pictures of their wives or girlfriends, some of which were quite provocative. However, nudity was strictly forbidden before graduation. The recruits organized a contest for the best photo. Many of the pictures Marcia sent in showed her in a short dress or swimsuit, but some showed a little more of her flesh. In one of the photos, she was wearing nothing but a bath towel, from underneath which one very slender leg was visible to above waist level. It wasn't pornographic, but it was clear that she had nothing under the towel. This picture won the contest, and I was proud to be engaged to such a sexy girl. However, I wondered who took the picture, since it wasn't exactly something her brother or father could have taken and cell phones with cameras and selfie sticks didn't exist in the 1970s. There was a lot more skin in the picture than she had ever shown me. From the beginning, she made it clear that she was a good Catholic girl and would never be fully naked in front of her soulmate until her wedding night. This, of course, meant that we never had sex. In fact, we only kissed. She wouldn't even let me touch her breasts, but she promised that would change on our wedding night. None of this surprised me, though. Marcia and I had first met in fifth grade, and although she flirted often, she would never be called free or easy. In fact, the only way I could describe her at the time was chaste. So, on graduation day, I naturally assumed she was still a virgin. Now would be a good time to introduce you to my longtime high school buddy, Rick Epstein. We'd known each other for at least a year before I met Marcia. We pretty much did everything together, fishing, camping, even sleeping over at each other's houses. But as we got older, I noticed that he was always eager to get his hands on everything I had, while having to outdo me if he could. For example, if I had a new fishing rod, he would buy a rod with a better or bigger reel. In high school, he often tried to pick on Marcia, even though he knew we were, what today's kids would call, an item. Marcia would just wave him off with a smile and walk away. The day I left for camp, he walked me to the airport, telling me he would keep an eye on Marcia. I had no reason not to trust her, so I just shook his hand and said thank you. The plane finally landed at a small airport near our town, and since it was quite late in the evening, my parents drove me home so I could get a decent night's sleep. The first thing I did was call Marcia. I have a surprise for you, she said, giggling as she often did. I can't wait to see it, I told her. I'll come right after I visit the old school. 
We ended the conversation after talking to each other for over an hour. The next day, I wanted to brag about two things, my uniform and my future wife. I put on my uniform, got in my pickup truck, and headed to my old school. After meeting my former principal and some teachers, I headed to Marsha's house. Marsha opened the door before I could even knock. Surprise, she exclaimed, you're going to be a daddy. What? I asked, shocked by her words. I immediately noticed that she was starting to show and her breasts were much larger than I remembered. She was definitely pregnant, but not with me. After all, I had been gone for almost six months and we had never once had sex, at her insistence. Are you out of your mind? I asked. You do realize we've never had sex, hell, I've never even seen you naked. So how the hell am I supposed to be a dad? Well, we're getting married, and since I'm the mom, you're going to be the dad, she said. What? You don't think I'm going to fall for that? I shouted. Tell me, and I want to know the truth, who's the father? You. I told you, she said. As soon as we get married, you're going to be the father. My mind went into overdrive. Surely, she wasn't that naive. Are you really that stupid, Marsha? We've never done anything, but you expect me to raise a child someone else gave you? Well, she began. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I said, mimicking a line from the Brady Bunch. Remember, the show first aired in 1969, and new episodes aired until March 1974. I took a deep breath and counted to ten. I loved Marsha, but I was beyond furious. I needed to know the truth. Tell me the truth, Marsha. Did you and Rick have sex while I was gone? I asked. She sat up and looked away, as if she was afraid to answer me. Well, just a few times, she finally said, but that was only because I loved you and missed you. It didn't really mean anything. How many times? I asked. I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 times, she said. So you slept with Rick 15 or 20 times, let him get you pregnant, and now you're telling me it was because you love me? I asked. Yes, she replied, with tears in her eyes. And now you're telling me it's really my baby because we have to get married? Yes, Marcia said. I shook my head in bewilderment. By this time, her father and brother had entered the front room. I'm sorry, Mr. Esposito, but I can't have this wedding, I said. He didn't look too happy. Marcia says it's your baby, so I think you should do the right thing, he said. My God, I thought, is everyone in this family stupid? Mr. Esposito, do you realize that Marcia and I have never had sex? Hell, I've never even seen her naked, and she just admitted that she actually slept with Rick Epstein 15 to 20 times, I said. Is that true, he asked his daughter. Yes, daddy, she told him, sobbing. He looked at her like something the family dog had left in the yard damn it, he said, you're just as stupid as your mother. He looked at me with genuine sadness in his eyes. I'm so sorry, son. I didn't realize my daughter had inherited her mother's stupidity, he lamented. Are you sure you can't handle it? No, Mr. Esposito, I can't, I replied. If she can't be faithful to me while I'm in a military camp, there's no way she'll be faithful to me if I have to go to war. And I'm certainly not going to raise someone else's child. No doubt we'll only end up divorced. But dad, Marcia interjected, Rick and I have only had sex, we've never made love. Her brother Frank literally laughed out loud. Give me a break, Marcia, he said. I caught you literally shaking his brains out right here in the front room, along with two of his friends. I even have some Polaroids, he said as he looked at me. Do you want to see something? It hit me then. Frank, did you take that picture of Marcia in the towel, the one she sent me? I asked. Oh yeah, that was fun. Check it out, he replied, pulling a thick photo album from a bookcase against the wall. He opened it up and showed me the pictures, starting with the one showing her in the towel. There she was, completely naked by the pool, followed by a series of Polaroid shots. She really got into it, Frank said. You remember that day, don't you, Dad, he asked, looking at his blushing father. 
It was the day she gave you a naked lap dance on the picnic table. Frank looked back at me. She can be a real shocker, he said. I have many, many pictures too. Here's one. Where she's sleeping with two black guys at the same time, he said, opening another book and showing me a picture of Marcia. Please, Frank, don't use words like that in front of your sister, his father said. But that's exactly what she was doing, Dad, he said. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The Espositos always seemed so honest. What kind of crazy is going on in this house? I wondered. Marcia, I asked, how many guys have you had sex with since I asked you to marry me? I don't know, maybe seven or eight, she replied. Frank laughed again. Maybe seven or eight hundred, he said. Sarcastically, don't forget I have pictures, he added, pointing to the numerous photo albums in the bookcase. But that was just sex. I didn't love any of them. I only love you, and I'm saving myself for you, I promise, she said. Tell me, do you ever use a condom with the guys you sleep with? I asked. What's a condom, she asked, enunciating the word slowly. It was too stupid for me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My girl was just a round-faced ass who was willing to take anyone and everyone, including her own brother and father, and all three of them were proud of it. I couldn't believe she'd managed to keep it from me for so long. I had to get out of this madhouse. I have to get out of here, I said. Marcia, the wedding is off. There's no way we can get married, not after this. Hell, you don't even know who the father of your child really is. I'm a strict one-woman man, and I expect my wife to be a one-man woman. Goodbye, I said, and turned to leave. Marcia jumped to her feet and cried, please don't leave me. I didn't love them, only you, she said. Marcia, you have no concept of love. Lust, maybe, but not love. For all I know, you've slept with half the county, including your own brother, all the while denying everything and making me believe you were a chaste little girl, I said. That's not true, she said. I didn't sleep with half the county. I know for a fact there are 150,000 people living in the county, and I haven't slept with 75,000 guys, not even close, she asserted. Well, good for you, Marcia, I said, but it's too late for us. I've got to go. Have a happy life, seriously. Bye. I turned and walked away without looking back. I made it home, changed into blue jeans and a Marine Corps t-shirt, and went to get something to drink. I ended up at the Wolverine Inn and drank a beer while contemplating the day's events. I noticed someone standing next to me and turned around to see who it was. Leah, I said, it's good to see you. Can I buy you a drink? Leah was another longtime friend. I'd known her since elementary school, and we'd been good friends ever since. She'd warned me about Marcia when we'd first gotten engaged, but I brushed off her warning, figuring she was just jealous. Have you seen her yet? She asked. Yes, I replied, how could I have been so stupid? You knew all along, didn't you? Hell, everyone knew. Everyone but you, that is, she said. I guess love really is blind. So the wedding's off, she asked. Cancelled, I said. There's no way I can get involved. So, what do you want to do, she asked. I looked at her long and hard. Leah didn't have the sultry look that Marcia had, but her red hair and burning green eyes mesmerized me as they always had. Are you hungry? I asked. She smiled. Actually, I am, she said. I could use a snack too, she added, taking my hand and leading me out of the bar. Do I really need to tell you what happened? As you can imagine, Marcia became the story, but then Leah came along and, thanks to her, my 10-day vacation was one I'll never forget, not that she let me forget. We had just celebrated our 44th anniversary and she was still hungry. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.